hello friends welcome you in this video tutorial in this video tutorial and next few videos we are going to talk about the best practices for exception handling in java right so if you know about uh, these five keywords like try cache finally throw and throws and how to use them you pretty much know what java exception handling is all about but uh, there are also some best practices for exception handling in java which you should try to follow uh, that is what this video talks about right so here uh, let's talk about the uh, basically first basically uh, java exception handling best practices so first best practices says uh, basically use a specific exception not exception or throwable right so basically it is always better to throw a specific exception right uh, uh, when i when we say a specific as exception that means a specific exception means subclasses exception rather than the more generic one like a super class like a throwable exception or runtime exception right so by doing that we can provide more information to the user what exactly went wrong the code is also more readable by giving info info about various exception it can throw rather than everything eating up by the exception or uh, throwable class right so here you can see same way if you if we catch basically uh, travel directly that is also wrong right so if you use a try catch block and here you instead of uh, using uh, any a specific exception right you are using a throwable and you are doing t dot print stack trace math that shouldn't uh, that should not be used basically so when i say that should not be used then what do you mean by that uh, here uh, basically throwable is the super class of all errors and exceptions in java right error is a super class of basically all errors which are not meant to be caught by the application right uh, thus catching throwable would essentially means that errors such as uh, system exceptions like out of memory exception uh, stack overflow would also get caught right and the recommended approach is that applications should not try to recover from errors right thus throwable and error classes should not be caught right so only exception and its subclasses should be caught right and that's the reason you should not try to catch uh, throwable when you specify throwable means you are trying to catch error as well and uh, uh, error should not be uh, catched by the application right and that's the reason this is not good approach here you can specify exception class or uh, subclasses of exception right so this is the first best practice second best practice sage uh, throw early or fail fast right so since an exception stack trace shows the exact sequence of method calls till the point of exception along with class name file name the line number where exception occurs it becomes very important to throw exception as early as possible right so when you would have seen uh, when you print the stack uh, a, a stack uh, print trace then that will print the entire information what is the class name what is the java file name what will be the line number etc right so to understand this point basically i'll take help of one existing example which i have written so here you can see i have created a project and there i have created three client program so we have a client one client two and client three right so here let's see what uh, will happen if we don't uh, do that right so here you can see here basically uh, in this program basically uh, we have a method is called read file and that is getting called from the main method and here you can see and uh, our co basically called method is basically or uh, declared some exception like class not found exception or end of file exception right and here basically we haven't uh, basically uh, uh, we haven't specify any specific uh, error 
uh, for exception handling right so if i run it then you'll see what kind of information is going to print by the print stack trace then let me show you the console now here you can see when i call this method read file and here you can see file name we are we have a specified empty string and uh, here basically when you pass empty string then this guy file input stream is throwing an exception right so here when you look into the stack trace right then uh, in the stack trace it is a little difficult to point out the real origin of exception seeing the stack trace it looks like problem in the basically file input stream though in reality problem in the code is that uh, there is no check for the empty uh, uh, empty file name that's the basically uh, that's the culprit to throw this exception right now let's see how we should do that right how we should uh, handle proper exception and that is done in the uh, client program too here you can see how we have handled we have written rewritten the same code again we are calling this read file method and by passing the empty file name and here you can see uh, this method basically uh, propagating this method basically uh, uh, declared file not found exception uh, end of file exception and illegal argument exception and here we have applied for the check if file name is null or file name is empty then we are throwing illegal argument exception explicitly and here we are specifies a meaningful message right so this is the basically correct way to handle uh, i mean exception right giving the precise preci precise information to the caller right so uh, suppose if i run this application then let's see in this case what a stack trace printed now a stack trace is saying that java dot lang dot illegal argument exception file name is not given right so it can be seen now with the check for the file name the stack trace gives precise information uh, precise uh, precise information about the problem right and uh, the caller will come to know what went wrong right so this is the way to basically handle the exception properly now let's come back to the slide and here uh, next uh, best practice we'll talk about the catch late so in in so basically uh, in case of checked ex exception it is enforced by the java compiler to either catch the exception or declare it in throws clause so generally developer tends to catch it and and do nothing except printing a stack trace or put a logger in order to avoid the compiler error right but uh, that way we are not providing the true information of what exactly happened right and this this is the thing which we will again try to understand through an example so let's come back to the same program and here basically so here if you look into the client program third so here basically if i run this application right so what print stack trace printed so here nothing this uh, i mean it's very difficult to find what went wrong again this is showing kind of problem with the file input stream right so here you can see that instead of declaring uh, and here uh, you can see i mean called method basically uh, you can see that instead of uh, basically declaring the exception in throws clause uh, catching it at the point where it can be handled uh, with try catch block is used and the exception is uh, caught using the file not found exception right if we see the stack trace it is not providing appropriate and precise information why basically exception occurred right so if you look into the stack trace there is no precise information it is better to catch exception only when it can be handled uh, appropriately uh, we can use a throws clause to declare the exception and put the responsibility of basically catching them on the caller method uh, this way exception handling has been passed further up the call chain and that's what we have done in the second example right second example basically called method haven't handled this, this exception using the try catch so here we are calling this method if some exception arises then called method basically 
uh, just called method has declared this exception and if any type of exception is arises this any type then that is going to propagate it to the basically calling method and calling method is basically responsible to handle this exception right this is the correct way to do this right so that's all i i wanted to discuss in this video tutorial in this video tutorial we basically we have talked about the three base three basically best practices in terms of exception handling in next videos we are going to talk about this little more uh, concept about the i mean uh, best practices about the uh, exception handling in java so guys big thank you for watching this video and this code of course i'm going to check in on the github and github location i will specify in the video description if you really like this video then don't forget to like share and subscribe my youtube channel